Oh, Janet Rangi, welcome, welcome. We are going to talk about affordable, cheap ways for student F1 visa. I know most of you, you are making application for the green cards. Good luck with the green cards, but we need plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D. Why? Because spring is coming, winter semester is coming, so the early we prepare, the better, okay? And that is why I'm coming up with this topic because I know some people are just too scared for the F1 student visa. We are not going to be scared because of the price. We are not going to be scared because we cannot pay for F1 student visa. Or this green card uh, season, we want when May comes, I don't want you to be shocked, okay? When May comes, you should be able to produce a student F1 visa. When everyone else will be thinking of the green card, you will already had a part one i mean plan a plan b plan c plan d okay this video is also for people who are already here in america i've been getting a lot of calls and for some reason people are concerned about paying fees i've done these videos for many years about how to pay for colleges and universities in the united states but since i receive many new members every day and they cannot go digging all videos i say let me use this time to go ahead and talk about this welcome Thank you so much for leaving your comments, for participating today. I love you so much for subscribing. I love you so much for following. If you haven't subscribed, subscribe, okay? If you haven't followed, consider following. Okay, number one, how are you going to pay for fees? Number one is to prepare and plan. That is that is obvious. And why, why do I say prepare and plan? Just like any other program, you always want to be prepared at least for one month right? If you are going somewhere, don't you want to plan for the trip at least for one month? You want to plan for the trip even for two months. So preparing is very, very important. So before you go into the details, if you didn't know, F1 student visa in the United States, that is how international students come, okay? And for you to get that F1, you will have to prove financial ability. It is the law. It is not a choice, okay? So for the basics, for the new ones, and for the new ones, if you come to watch Janet, come with pen and paper. Some of these things are not obvious. So I usually go from the basics and then I build from there, okay? So let's start from the basics, identifying a school, whether it's a community college or a university. Once you identify the school, of course, there'll be requirements. Some have more requirements than others. Some are straightforward than others. But for the most part, the general requirements they need, of course, your education. Some will take directly from your school. They'll be like, okay, just send us copies of your education. We need your transcripts, you need your degree, we need your passport, and we need, you know, um, a bank statement. That's simple. But some of them will say, no, we can't even take your documents. I love your comments. We can't take your documents straight from your hands. Please go to your old school and let them send their documents directly to us so we can verify that they came from that school. Okay, and some will accept your grades and some will not. Some will say, you know what, go and evaluate your documents and they will give you the organization here in America or Canada where they need you to send your documents so they can evaluate. The most common ones, the old ones, no ECE. Whereas Janet has been singing about World Education Services. So you'll find some universities will say, no, we can't accept your admission. I mean, give you admission until you take your documents to be evaluated and then after the evaluation, they will tell us the equivalent of American education, the grades you got, and then now we can admit you. In a nutshell, what are they going to need? Your transcripts, either directly from you mailed, emailed directly from the school, or evaluated by a credential evaluating service. That is number one. They will need to know the kind of education you have. Is it high school? Is it college? Okay, is it what, what kind of education do you have? Okay, number two. A must is a bank statement. And I'll do videos. I've done videos about bank statements. That's a whole topic for another day. But generally speaking, they want you to prove that you'll be able to pay for one year. And I'm going to cover this in details, actually, when we are breaking down how you'll be able to pay for fees in America without stress. Mark my words. Amir will deliver on this video without stress because we have to have plan A, plan B if you don't win. And then now May comes. The clever ones are already looking for schools, okay, because embassies feel very quick. So we have to prepare. Me, I'm not someone that waits at, until the last minute. So education, the bank statement, and when you say one year, the school will do an approximation. This is what they, what they look in the bank statement. The school decides how much should be in the bank statement, how. They look at how much you need for fees, room and board, 
books, tuition, combine all that and do an average for one year. And then they will say we need 25,000 US dollars per year. So minimum, you will have to produce a bank statement that is stating minimum 25,000 US dollars per year. The bank statement can come from you or it can come from a family member. Again, that is a story for another day. So long as they are willing to sign an affidavit saying they can support you. And from experience, some of you call me and say, but I'm here in America. Can I support my family? Yes. I've seen people get visas. In fact, sometimes it shows that you have social support. Okay. You are more likely to stay in school if you have an American sponsor. Now, some of you will say, but you'll be proving your ties are in America. Again, you are mixing issues. Again, let's not mix this video. Me, I'm just saying I've seen both. Bank statements can come from America. Bank statements can come from home. Okay. It doesn't matter. Okay, so long as that person is willing to pay for you, the school will issue a bank statement. That's why sometimes you can go to the embassy and they will not even ask for a bank statement because the law says there is no school in America that will give you admission without a bank statement. Some schools will need English requirements. Some schools will exempt you because where you come from a sunshine continent, they might not they say, you know, you went to school in English, no problem. We don't, we don't need you to prove anything. But most schools will need international students to prove that they have good communication skills and therefore you'll have to do tests such as TOEFL, uh, IELTS. Okay, Duolingo is getting out of fashion. I don't think they, 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 they do that a lot. Okay, but TOEFL and uh, IELTS are the most common. So if you have a pen and paper and you are new to this information, please write down those words, IELTS, I-E-L-T-S, IELTS, okay? TOEFL, T-O-E-F-L, okay? All those you know, you can do wherever you are. They are computer-based and paper-based, okay? So there are many ways you can do those exams. So they might need you to provide that proof. And then, of course, credential evaluation. Okay, so what have we said? Credential evaluation of your certificates, they might need it or might not, but you need to prove education. You have to prove a bank statement. You have to prove uh, English requirements. Then you have to do the whole application, okay, for admission, and then you'll pay application fees. Of course, you will need a passport in preparation and that will cover on embassy. So I just had to give you a brief background. OK, so when you are perusing and going through programs, you need to know what your major is and then you decide. Now we've decided. Let's go to the meat and bones of this video. We are here to know how am I going to pay because I can't even afford. Janet, I can't afford. OK, let's talk about it. Number one is to plan. If they give you a budget for one year, do the math. And I've done this math before. Please have a pen and paper ready. We've always done this math, right? Let's say fees is uh, 16,000 US dollars per year. That's on the lower end, okay? You'll be like, oh, I'm going to convert these dollars. It's going to be very expensive, right? No, let's, let's do the math. What they mean by that, in there there's tuition, in there there's room and board and books and everything. I would remove room and board. So let's say we remove 5,000, we take off transportation, housing, room and board. So we remain with 10,000, okay? I want you to divide 10,000 times, uh, divide by two semesters. All of a sudden, one semester is costing you 5,000 US dollars. When you come, 5,000 US dollars, you go to the uh, finance office or you go online, you ask for something called payment plans. Now divide 5,000, divide by three or divide by four. You find that every one month you pay. Every one month you pay. So if you have that mindset, okay, I want you to have a mindset of knowing that the bank statement is per year. Remove room and board because I've always said you'll crash on your, on your friend's sofa. you eat beans and rice, right? you find a roommate. If not, please be prepare because the reason they give you that bank statement, you need to prove because they don't want you to become something called a public charge. Public charge is someone who comes to a new country, they are not prepared, and then they end up on the streets. Maybe they want to start asking for help for, for, for things they didn't pay in their taxes. So they don't want that. They don't want you to be homeless. No one should be homeless because, you know what, tickets are two-way. No one has chased you from home. And you know that is what gives people courage to come to these countries. No one has chased you from home, and you have a two-way ticket. So what do you fear? Try. You want to come to school to America, you just have to make that decision. Okay? But if you see that these things are impossible, and I've always said, your goal should not be scholarship, scholarship, and yet we'll talk about scholarship. But what have you done yourself as an individual, okay, to show that at least you are putting in the work? But if you start with just impossible, it is impossible. How is it impossible? I've just broken down and you can see that it's actually possible. Now, you say, but Janet, even if you break it down like that, 
How am I going to afford that? I don't even have that money. Student F1 visa is a working visa. Did you know that? It's a working visa, 20 hours, okay? 20 hours on campus. 20 hours on campus. Let's say now you go to that school that is paying you. Let, let me get my calculator. Let's calculate, okay? You are you come on a student visa, do the math and share with us here, and then you do 20 hours per, 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 per week. That is the, the law, okay? 20 hours per week. So we're going to multiply 20 hours, 20 hours per week times, these days, you know, it has gone up a little bit, $15 an hour. $300 per week. Let's multiply by four weeks. Four weeks, 1,200. Remember, our fee was per semester 5,000. Okay, we're going to divide 5,000, divide by four payment plans. Divide by four payment plans. We get 1,200. Voila. 1,250. And you've already worked 20 hours per week. You've already covered tuition. And you are crashing on someone's sofa and you came with some money from home. Do you understand? But, you know, that is how, that is the mindset of a winner. Do you understand? That is a mindset of a winner, a mindset of a person who knows that, you know what, come what may, I want to go and study, I want to have this good experience in America, I want to have all these good skills and go back with good education. And then you're like, I can't afford, I can't afford. Who told you people that came here had millions? They just had a strong desire to succeed, strong desire to succeed. Okay, so number one is to face the math. Face the math. Okay, face it. Don't run away from it. When you look at the school, start calculating. I had this, uh, this person was from my village and now she's in New Hampshire. I had this, I've had this person is in Minnesota. Social ties, social ties. They'll give you somewhere to sleep, my friends. They'll give you a sofa to sleep. And if you don't have a sofa, okay, go to church. Okay. On Saturday, you are there, you know, if you are seventh day, yeah, 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 yes, so what? Go, Jesus Christ, you go praying, you know, you show up. You understand? So you show up in church. Now, in church, you'll find roommates, okay? you find roommates. I'll give you an example of one. You know how people call me. I'm a resource person. I have a non-profit for a reason. Janet, now I don't know anyone, but you know what? I came here on a visit visa, and you know what? I came with the intent of going home, and I did everything right. I followed the law. I came, I toured, I enjoyed myself. But after four months, Janet, I saw a very good school. I decided to stay back, and I did. I followed the law. I changed status. Now I've been approved to become a student, Janet. Thank you so much for your videos. And by the way, if you need help, Janet Rangi, 67 at Gmail. Okay, Janet Rangi, 67 at gmail.com. So this is a true story of a person. But Janet, now I don't know anyone. I don't know where to stay. And this school is even out of state. I am in Arizona and the school is in Texas. Janet, what am I going to do? Okay, clearly you came to visit. Your intent was to go back and you, you followed the law. You came, you stayed, and then you changed your mind. You said, now I've gotten a program. Why not? Let me, you know, uh, use this opportunity to do this, you know, school before I go back home. And I'm like, okay. Janet, I've been calling you. You are not replying. I say, okay. You don't know anyone. Okay. Find a motel. But I'm in Arizona, Janet. Why will you tell me? Find a motel. Find a motel, Janet. I say, but a motel is for people to live. So you are in Arizona, you don't know anyone in Texas, what do you want me to, to do? All I know, if you come to Texas, there are churches. Make sure you attend church. But for now, go to a motel. Oh, Janet, blah, blah, blah. Okay, I say, you know what? Give me five minutes. Right now I'm with clients, but I'll call you back. And I call him back. And I said exactly what I'm telling you. I say, go to a motel. Do the math for a motel per night. And then what next, Janet, once I go there, I told you, you are the first one to attend that school. You are the first one to attend that school. Oh, no, 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 Janet. I say, okay, call me after one week. He, he called me after what? And he said, Janet, if it works out, you, you know, I, I will give you ice cream. That's what he said. Me, I thought he was joking. Okay. <laughs> so he went, booked a motel. The first day of school, because he has to follow the law, show up in class. Okay. Guess what? He didn't call me after a week. He called me after two days. Janet, Janet, I'm so excited. I said, what excitement? You are stressed. 
No, actually, I went to class and we were we were people, we were four people from Kenya. And three of them know you, Janet. I said, oh, say hi to them. Actually, one of them was looking for a roommate. Janet, thank you so much. Thank you so much. I have a roommate. You see, you see, you see, you see. You look at impossibilities. That is why you don't succeed. Instead of looking for possibilities, as I told you, the people that come here on student visas are not kids from, from ministers. They are not necessarily children from rich families, but they have a strong desire to succeed. And they know that they have a two-way ticket. This issue of saying people are on the streets, people, why are they on the street when they have home? I don't agree with that. I've even seen a video where someone is going showing, look at these people in Canada on the streets and him is walking in a beautiful house. I'm like, why don't you show them how you got that beautiful house? Why do you think them they will struggle on the street more than you? Why would they be on the streets and you have a house you are going to? It's not impossible. You should have seen that person I saw on, a, on another social media platform telling people, oh, look, you left country, you, you're here struggling. As if it's easy to start. Okay, but me, I was like, okay, can someone tell this man to show people why he is going to a beautiful house? So if he's going to a beautiful house and he has the same accent like you, why is he telling you it's impossible? And laughing and saying, why? This is why you should not come. Why are you there? Okay, so the whole moral of the story is to have a strong desire to succeed and have the courage to face life. Okay, so this person now is happy. And those friends you find, write down, write down, write this one, write this one down. We are still on the topic of affordable, cheap ways of uh, affording student visa. Write this one down. Those friends, they know something you don't. What did I say? They know something you don't. They know something you don't, my friends. They know something you don't. There are also students like you. You know, when I was going to UCLA for my master's, okay, and when I was in UCLA, the pharmacology is so difficult, but I kept on looking around the class. I'm saying these people are also here. So if they will pass, I also pass. So you can see other international students. I know you come from different families and different abilities. But some of them have the same background like you. They come from the same country like you. So you can last with them. You can, those is what we call social networks. Okay, you are going to, 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 to have social networks. And social networks are there for a reason. They know something you don't. Hello, hello. Okay, yeah. So, hi, Janet. The school I've been admitted to, I'm told I'm not going to work. Yes, you cannot work the first semester. You have to plan. Some you can work. Some are too small. They might not have a job. Okay, so keep, that's why I'm doing this video. Okay, so we've covered how to plan ahead and how to face the math. Okay, so now we face the math. Now we have connections. Now we are thinking of going to the church. Now we are thinking of meeting our friends and families. Now we are thinking of networking and sleeping on the sofas and eating rice and beans and saving everything for tuition. We are also thinking of that on-campus job 20 hours per week. It's not always available, especially a school that has a heavy international student body. Okay, now if you're in a master's, you'll get something called graduate assistantships. Usually most of them, you want to come during the fall season, but the fall semester is tough because you have two semesters. At least if you come the spring, you only attend one. One, one semester and then summer break. Summer break, students are busy on campus making money for the next semester. Do you understand? So that is another way. Sometimes spring semester, that is why you need to come. If you need admission to us, we get admission quickly. You understand? Janet Rangi, 67 at gmail.com. Okay, this spring semester, you need to start early now because the embassy is filling up. Okay, now graduate assistantship, very common for people who are coming, especially for masters. Don't think they're always good. Okay, some people prefer having on-campus jobs than graduate assistantship. I don't know why, but just know graduate assistantship, your tuition is paid so you have less stress because they've paid for your tuition. How do you get graduate assistantship? Admission, admission, admission. Once they admit you, they will tell you, hey, here are the graduate assistantships we have. If you work this number of hours in school, we will compensate for your tuition. So normally, master students sometimes, mostly, they do not even have to pay for that tuition. And you now, you're busy saying how school is expensive. Mind you, you still have to prove to the embassy that you have the ability to pay for one year. Okay, let's move to scholarships. How do you get scholarships? Again, scholarships are offered. The key word here, admission, admission, admission. Do not ask for a scholarship before you even have a school. 
Okay, so when you get admission, they will give you the programs and the scholarships that are available on campus and off campus. And even you now, you can even start looking for off campus sources of uh, for uh, off campus sources of what scholarships. But the key word is admission. Now let it let, let, let me just break down who gets the scholarship. Let's let's be realistic here. I love your comments. The person that's going to get a scholarship among everything else and do not be discouraged because Janet is going to talk about other ways for paying fees. Just stay tuned until the, the last minute of this video, okay? The person that is going to get the scholarship, let us just be honest. That person that has done standardized testing, the way I say TOEFL and, and IELTS and passed higher than everyone else. That person that went and did what? Standardized tests such as GRE, graduate record exams. That person that passed very well the SATs and probably among the highest. That person that did very well in GMAT, so standardized tests and performing well and having good grades, like there are schools I know in Dallas that will say, okay, if you do not have TOEFL and you came from Kenya or you came from this country, show us a B in English, we will admit you, okay? So in other words, sometimes scholarships are merit-based. Don't get me wrong, sometimes they have need-based scholarships. Okay, where you say, I come from this kind of family and I was struggling. So please, 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 I'm the first one to graduate out of college, wherever, wherever. That, those reasons. Okay, but even with those, they want someone who is smart, who wants to give a scholarship to someone who is not going to pass exams. Okay, so let's just be honest. You have to be merit based. So if you are looking for a scholarship, I'm sorry to be the, the, the bearer of bad news. But honestly, if you're one of those people whom I love, of course, I still help people with admissions, whether they have D pluses or, or C, okay? But you can't compete with someone who has an A. Are we clear? Someone who is in athletics and they write a good bank, a good uh, a statement of purpose. You are asking for a scholarship. You know, I grew up from a very poor family. We did not even have meals. You know, they assume most of us are like that anyway. Okay, um, please help me. I, you know, I, 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 I'm an orphan and I've never just had anyone take care of me or poor me. And please help me. I'll be no, no, no. You can mention in one sentence, I come from a disadvantaged background, but that I did not leave that to, to put me down. I did not let that decide my destiny. I worked so hard, I attained this bachelor's degree. And if given a chance, based on my poor background, I am willing to make a difference. I want to go back for this engineering course so that I can make a difference back in my society. I want to go and build small bridges so that the children cannot drown during the rainy season. Now, this is a person that can get up. Again, what you tell them is the, it is what it is, what you say. So you cannot say, oh, poor me, poor me. How is poor going to help them? But if you're poor and then you put in those things, why you need the scholarship? So yes, yeah, scholarships are there. They are limited, but usually they are merit-based. So think in terms of look at yourself, look at your grades, look at what you did, okay, to get into that campus. Did you put in effort? All right, so that is, that's something for you to consider scholarships now let us go to reality now okay you 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 bank statement people are willing to help you good but you want to to give back you don't want just to 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 to, to suck everything okay like you don't want to be parasitic you understand we, we don't want to be parasitic so what are you gonna do let's look at other ways now let's talk about loans okay write it down write it down Janet has, has talked about something called Empower Loans. Empower, M-P-O-W-E-R, okay? I've sung about this. This has made a difference to many, many people since I started doing these videos, okay? You say, Janet, what are Empower Loans? These ones were never there for some of us when we came to America, okay? But now they have Empower Loans for international students. Janet, how do I get? You can't just get any school. It has to be an Empower approved school. And this is the good news about Empower Loans, okay? This is, will make a difference between Empower and something else. Empower Loans, you will get Empower Loans, okay, without a cosigner. You do not have to know an American, okay? Empower Loans, so long as you get admission in their institutions, you can apply. 
but getting into an institution that is qualified for empower more than likely will put in more effort you are you are not one of those people that just i just want a quick admission i just want a quick admission no you are competing with the whole world you are competing with those ones from here okay so you want to get admission meaning you will have to have credential evaluation you will have to have language preparation you will have to have standardized testing so to get not always don't get me wrong don't get me wrong, but if you have admission from an Empower approved school, my friend, you are more likely to get uh, loans approved. And by the way, when I say loans, a hundred percent. So if the fee is forty five thousand US dollars per year, yes, they can give you that. Be mindful of the courses you're taking. STEM courses usually very marketable. Nursing, science, all those usually very good. So you choose a course that when they look at you, when you graduate, you are more likely to get a good job and pay the loans back. Okay, so that is how now you see, you say, ah, it's impossible. You know, Janet, I come from up. Some of you come and I say, have you watched my videos? And maybe you think I'm rude. Oh, Janet, you didn't even pick the calls. And I've told you, I would just, I would just need your help. But that's why I'm doing this video to serve the masses. Okay, because the reason I don't even pick the calls, because first of all, the volume is a lot. And I love you, I love you, I love you. And we've given you a chance to go in the emails and do a consultation. Why? Because me, I, I am smart. Okay. I've tried to give this phone to people. Okay. And every question that comes in, let's call her. The secretary cannot answer that. They cannot, and you know it. Can you imagine? Hello. Yes. I'm looking for Janet Rangi. Or oh, this uh, Janet is busy. Okay. Can I, what can I leave a message? I want to know more about Empower Loans. How is she supposed to know? Now you see, now you see, oh, I had her talk about Empower Loans, but I had further questions about the requirements. How is she supposed to answer? Okay, now you see, you get the point. Okay, so that's why I do this video. Listen to the video. Most of my videos are self-explanatory and most people are successful just by watching my videos. Okay, so don't think like, okay, because she didn't pick my phone, now she's not providing good customer service. No, 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 no. This video right here is customer service, okay? I've just given you life-changing. This is life-changing. There are many people who come to Empower here because they watch these videos and they are stress-free. And they're almost graduating. Some of them are going into very good courses that they had to pay 40,000. Who would have given you 40,000 US dollars per year? And you even fear to pay consultation $99. You are calculating for someone who is giving you knowledge for 40,000 US dollars per year. In a lifetime, you'll earn 5 million US dollars and you are busy crying over $99. Put things in perspective. Pay for your services. You will, you will never regret. And above all, you have nothing to lose. You have everything to gain. Do you understand? That is what I believe in. That's what I did. I let money work for me. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. So empower loans. Again, we are still on the topic. This thing must not fall. We are still on the topic. Affordable, cheap ways for student F1. Not everything is uh, cheap, but some are affordable. For example, if you find empower loans, those who are not listening to this video, some of them don't even know this. Okay. If you are meeting me for the first time, consider subscribing, consider following. Okay. I've talked about empower loans maybe for about five years or six. And we've had thousands succeed through this. Thousands succeed through this very comfortably. Okay, very comfortably. Thank you so much. Now let's go to the next one. Let's say you 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 happen to be in a situation like some of someone. Yeah, I'll never be able to work. Well, do you have a US relative? Do you have someone who is very close? And by close, I mean very close, almost intimate. Why is this important? It's because you can still get loans so long as you have an American cosigner. This one, any school, any place, most likely, if you want a loan, there are many loans in America. They are willing to loan. You see, if they loan you for 10 years, it means the bank is in business for 10 years. Okay? But this one, Empower, you don't need a cosigner. You just have to work a, a little, not a little bit harder to get into those schools. Make sure you have all the requirements. So it's up to you. But if you don't and you think you can afford a bank statement, someone can be willing to help you out. But then when you go to school, you don't. I just expect the one who gave you a bank statement to be doing everything. Consider student loans, but those ones that need cosigner. And it's not just any cosigner. That's why on this page, I teach our people to have good credit, okay? That cosigner has to have at least good credit. I'm thinking at least 720 or 680, something like that, but something good, okay? So they have to be a U.S. permanent resident or a U.S. citizen with good, good uh, credit. 
what is good credit they can trust them that they will pay the loans back now this is tricky this is why i say that person has to be close almost intimate because if you default on the loans they will go for that relative or that friend who co-signed for you so it's a risky game that's why you can't just say but hey people in america they don't like to ask they can't even help you you ask they cannot help you know my friend they are putting their foot forward and taking a bill will you do that just for anyone someone goes and takes a loan for twenty thousand us dollars in your name and you don't even know if they'll pay or not but does it happen here we have a lot of co-signing you co-sign for people for cars you co-sign them for <laughs> get into that at your own risk but i'm just saying if you're stuck and you have someone who is willing even for one semester maybe you need only five thousand that's something you can talk to someone to co-sign for you five thousand us dollars and yes they will give you five thousand us dollars okay so this is not impossible they give it all the time they have no problem so long as you have someone to co-sign for you okay okay now let's move to the next one this one people make this biggest mistake but i've seen it save so many people i've seen people just now now of course from day one when you're choosing schools be wise be wise why are you choosing a school that is sixty thousand us dollars why are you choosing a school that is forty five thousand us dollars per year okay and i know sometimes you choose those because the school will give you a scholarship of 20 or 30 okay makes sense okay but if there is no scholarship and you know you are struggling why don't you do your research and get a cheap school anyway anyway in the event that you got this school and you got the visa and you're here okay don't go out of status don't allow yourself to, to to mess up change move to a cheap school did you know that did you know that okay they have no problem transferring students now if you add people's scholarship they're like hey, you need to be here for a semester of course there are conditions there are conditions but no one will stop you from moving from a university go to a community college do the courses prepare i've seen people who have moved from a university gone to a community college covered a few courses got financially stable then went back to the university do not hesitate to look for research move to another state do whatever it takes don't be paying for forty-five thousand us dollars when that would have covered the whole education from beginning to end because you just did not do your research okay remember just because you came to one school of course at the port of entry if you are going to new hampshire stick with new hampshire and show up in new hampshire but in new hampshire when you go to school now you've registered for classes and you are looking at the fees and you're like you know what this this school this state is too expensive no one will stop you okay they can for a moment but you have to get admission from the other school so the process is you get admission in the new school you go to the current school admissions international office you say hey thank you so much for the opportunity okay but actually i wanted to do nursing and i found this nursing in another state can you transfer can you transfer my f1 can you transfer they will do that that is that is it that is it and then now you will be less stressed or maybe you have a place where there are more people who have more social support okay more social support means you can find people who will house you you can find people who will you know encourage you okay give you rice and beans give you a sofa to sleep and then you are busy stuck in an expensive school and then now you're stressing okay now i hope you are, i always say pen and paper i don't even have lost track another one that uh, people don't know okay this one write down okay economic hardship what did i say economic hardship i'm almost finishing the video is going longer than i thought economic hardship you go to admission office and say hey you know i'm struggling can you write for me a letter to go to the immigration and ask for a work permit? Yes, you had me right. Again, I have people who have done it. And, and I just I have a work permit. Like when you said in the video, it worked for me. Voila. Life-changing decisions. I love you, I love you, I love you. Now, you cannot just go there and then you start telling people, I can't pay, I can't pay. No, they don't like that. You came to school to pay in the event that you cannot pay just be aware just be aware I mean, i'm just here to give you information okay that there's something called economic hardship you can find it on their site okay you need a letter but you cannot just say i want to because of it no 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 the law has specific ways there are things you have to tell them is it because when you left the currency was okay now it has become very expensive to change your currency into us dollars that is a reason because guess what you budgeted for maybe sixteen thousand us dollars per year but the way this currency is going my friend you maybe it's going up to twenty three thousand us dollars so it's gonna pay for that difference that is a good reason not a good reason it's listed changing currency 
In other words, you cannot just say, ah, I come from a poor family, so I want a work permit. There's a difference. Again, what is the law? Read the law. I'm just telling you. If it's saying these are the conditions and you are busy saying this is because I'm poor, they will deny. There's nothing in the, in the law that says that we are going to give you a work permit because you're poor. Why did you come? There is a difference, okay? Car change in currency, and you need to read about this. Because when I do a video, I don't cover everything, but I give you enough information. I might forget one or two things. That's why sometimes you go and do self-help and you mess up. There are some things that are very complex that you really need to do consultations. Okay, don't just speak because this video I can do. Then tomorrow I do another video, but I forgot one thing here. I forgot one thing. When you come to me, I'm able to tie everything together. Okay, economic change in currency, your sponsor. Your sponsor who gave you affidavit of support in the bank statement. They've lost their job. Okay, maybe they got sick. Maybe the business has gone down. They are no longer earning the same amount of money. Can you prove that? That is a good reason. The school has decided to increase fees. Because you budgeted for 16,000 US dollars, now the school fees has gone to 20,000 US dollars. That is a reason. I forget the fourth one. I think there's usually four or five reasons why you can ask for economic hardship. And yes, they will give you a work permit. Did you know that? To work off campus. Okay, 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 okay. All right, okay, okay. Economic hardship. Okay, now let me touch base with these two very quick. You don't have to use them. There's something called optional practical training okay or pt and also we have another one called cpt these ones they give you all international students after graduation okay they are allowed to stay back and do internship that internship is what we call optional practical training okay you can go to the area if you went to accounting after graduation you can find a job anywhere anywhere in the united states and yes you can apply for a work permit now, but you're saying, Janet, this is after graduation, but I'm struggling. I am struggling. Now, no, you can borrow that time. Did you know that? You can borrow. If you're really struggling, why would you go under removal proceedings? Knowledge is power. I would rather go and ask, can I get my OPT? I know after graduation, I have one year. Can I borrow six months? And then after graduation, they will remind you you borrowed. Don't think they will, they'll forget. They'll count up to the hour. So you can borrow your OPT and use it ahead of time. But those are complex things that will need people who are sharp. CPT, same thing. This is mostly for, for uh, master students. But this one, you have to at least be in school for one year or can be doing master's program. And when you go for CPT, it has to be related to the area of study. You understand? And that area of study, they have to grade you. So it's just like another internship. But at least they pay you. There's another one if you're working for, you know, international bodies, I think is it United Nations or whatever, but that's beyond this video, okay? But generally, remember that there are options you have for CPT to avoid removal, okay? Sometimes have even applied for, what can I say, to hold the semester maybe because you're sick. The thing is, never let just your papers expire. Try and talk to someone. If you're sick, do you have a doctor's note? Did you they write? Maybe you're pregnant. Maybe you're having intense bleeding. You need to take a break from school. Go and explain. Let them tell you your options. Okay, don't just sit there and let papers expire. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Above everything, take the right course. And that I will come for the next video and teach you the right courses for you to take. Don't just come and take uh, courses because for the sake of taking courses. Some of you listening, I love your comments, okay? I love your comments. Do you have any ideas how people pay for universities and colleges? Okay, for me, I've covered the ones I know. Uh, because I'm doing it often, I hope I didn't forget. Some of you have been following me for a long time and you are beneficiaries of this information and you are watching me now and you are practicing what I'm telling you. Please share with us in the comment section. The comment section is not just for Janet, it's for everyone else. Okay, just share with people in the comment section how you made it here, how you paid for universities and colleges, and share with us. Is it possible for you to come to America, even if you are from a poor family? This was a true story. I think it was five years ago. A young girl called me, Janet, Janet, I just want to thank you because I came to America. But you know what? I have nothing to tell you except there's one video, Janet. I met you for the first time on Facebook. I thought it was a joke. And you said one thing, so you never know what I'm saying and who it's affecting. You said one thing. I said, what did I say? You said one thing, Janet, that I really liked and it worked for me. I said, please share. I'm waiting. Yes. 
you say that people that come to America do not have to be rich. And me, Janet, I used to think this is just for those rich people and the ministers and people who have connections in America, their family and relatives. I didn't know anyone, but Janet, I'm here and I'm doing nothing. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Voila. Use that as an example. You, you, you watching me. Scholarship, 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 scholarship. You have two hands. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Okay? So go behind, uh, at the beginning of this video, jot down all these ideas. Sometimes when you are talking, you might miss a few points, but when you go watching again, you can write things that you, you missed out. Merci beaucoup. Asante ni sana. Muchas gracias. Thank you so much for subscribing. Thank you so much for following. For those who need help, remember the spring semester is here. The winter semester is here. If you need any help, please come to janetrangi67 at gmail.com. You are not going to be that kind of a person that is going to give the embassy a hard time. Why I am late? I am late. And then you need to be getting admissions now. Start to prepare now so that you, 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 you plan ahead. So that you don't run out of the semester. But in the event that you don't get the semester and you don't get the embassy appointment, please remember you can always ask the school to forward your I-20 and they know it. So it's never an emergency. You can't be calling me as an emergency. You can't be calling the embassy as an emergency unless you have a scholarship that you might lose. Other than that, they are very aware that semesters can be moved. They can give you a new I-20. So consider coming to the email janetrangi67 at gmail.com if you need any further guidance about applying for colleges and universities in the United States. Good luck with education. We are going to pay. We are not going to have excuses. And this is plan B. For those who will do now, when the other ones will be here in May, checking, and they decide, sorry, 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 and they find out they didn't win the green card. You will be smiling. The green card will find you here. Okay, you'll be smiling with admission. Me, I like putting things in different baskets. I cannot just have eggs in one basket. I like distributing. I like to have options. Options. Okay, okay, okay. Now you are watching me, and then you wonder how people are driving good cars and why they have investments. They are just making these decisions. And then when they earn dollars, you say, oh, they are lucky. They are lucky. No, they make decisions. I love you so much. I will see you in the next video. Sorry, I cannot do the, the comments today. Thank you so much. And I love you back with all your kind words. I really appreciate Okay, I don't want this video to elongate too much. I love you guys. I will see you in the next video. Thank you. Okay. Go.